शिवाय नम शिवाय नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय नम शिवाय नम शिवाय Adikarna 5 body after reaching brahma loka sutra 10 abhavam badarirahayevam badarhi badari asserts abhavam the absence of body and organs he because the upanishad aha has said evam thus translation badari asserts the absence of body and organs for one who reaches the brahma loka the world of brahman for the upanishad says so from the text the mains become associated with him at his mere wish chandogya 821 it becomes established that the mind at least exists as the instrument of desire even after realizing the qualified brahman Now it is being examined whether the body and the sense organs also exist or do not exist for the man who attains divine powers. As to that, the teacher Badari thinks that the body and senses do not exist for the man of knowledge who becomes thus exalted. How can this be so? Because the scriptural passage runs thus: He becomes delighted by seeing mentally through these divine mental eyes. these desirable things that exist in the world of brahman chandogya 8125 were it the case that he roamed about with his mind as well as body and sense organs then the specific mention of mentally would not have occurred hence there is absence of body and sense organs after liberation sutra 11 bhavam jaimenir vikal pamnanat jaimini jaimini asserts bhavam the existence of body and sense organs vikalpa amananat since the upanishad speaks of option translation jaimini asserts the existence of body and sense organs after the realization of the qualified brahman since the upanishad speaks of option The teacher Jaimini thinks that like the mind the body and sense organs also exist for the liberated man since in the text he remains one he becomes threefold fivefold etc Chandogya 7 26:2 The Upanishad mentions that he has the option of changing his state variously and diversification without a difference of body is not easy to accomplish Although this diversification is read of in the Upanishad as a matter of option in the context of the knowledge of the absolute infinite Brahma still it is presented there in that context for the sake of eulogizing the knowledge of the infinite just because this divine power does accrue as a matter of fact in the context of the knowledge of the qualified Brahma and hence this result does actually emerge in connection with the meditation on the qualified brahman sutra 12 dvadasha havadubhaya vidyam badarayano taha ataha hence badarayana badarayana considers the released soul as ubhayor vibham of both characteristics dvadasha ahavat like the dvadasha sacrifice translation hence badarayana considers the released souls to be of both kinds that is with or without bodies and senses just as it is the case with the dvadasha 12 day sacrifice vedanta hence because both these indicatory marks are noticed in the upanishad Therefore the teacher Badarayana thinks that it is valid both ways 
When a liberated soul wishes to have a body, he gets one. And when he desires to remain without it, he has none. For his will is true and desires are diverse. This is like the sacrifice performed for twelve days, dvadashaha. Just as a dvadashaha can be both a satra and an ahina, because the Vedas present indicatory marks of both, so also is the case here. Sutra 13 Tanva bhave sandhya vadupapate tat abhave in the absence of a body, the fulfillment of desires, upapate, becomes reasonable. Sanvyavat, as it is in a dream. Translation In the absence of a body, the fulfillment of desires is reasonably possible as in dreams. In the view that the body, together with the sense organs, ceases to exist in liberation, the liberated souls can have their desires for manes and others fulfilled through their minds alone by merely feeling their presence just as one would have them in a dream. For it can be justified in this way. Sutra 14 Bhave Jagradvat Bhave When there is existence of the body, etc., the fulfillment occurs Jagradvat as in the waking state. Translation When the body exists, the fulfillment of the desires is just as in the waking state. In the view, however, that the body exists, the liberated soul can reasonably have desires for father and others fulfilled by their actual presence just as much as in the waking state. Namaste. So, whereas the various Neo-Advaita and New Age and all these, you know, other teachers present enlightenment as just an unconditioned merging into Brahman, Vyasadeva, in his Brahma Sutras, presents a much more nuanced approach, that there are different levels one may have a body, one may not have a body, one may engage in all kinds of uh, activities or none at all. You see, it's not just a binary thing. Either you're enlightened or you're not. But there are degrees, there are stages of enlightenment, if you will. And these all depend on one thing, which is realization of Brahman. Now, once Brahman is realized, one becomes identical with Brahman in oneself. And from there, he can go on to create bodies or not, or perform activities or not, or to have relationships with other beings or not. Now, speaking from my own experience, in the realization of conditioned Brahman, the secondary Brahman, with qualities, Saguna Brahman. One has a relationship with God or goddess or both in a wonderful, ecstatic world where everything is perfect and there's no anxieties or danger, no lack of resources or anything distracting one from these pastimes. And this goes on until the end of the created universe, at which time everything merges back into Brahma. That seems wonderful to me. <laughs> and that is what I have realized. But I can understand there are other points of view, there are other forms of realization, and there are other uh, uses or activities in self-realization that I may not know, I may not be aware of, and certainly have not experienced. That's fine. Huh? For example, if you look in the Puranas, Shiva Purana describes the spiritual world as one where Shiva is in control of everything. 
But if you read Srimad Devi Bhagavatam, it describes a spiritual world where Devi is in charge. Huh? Shakti, Maya. <laughs> and if you read any of the other Puranas, like Vishnu Purana or uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, it looks like Vishnu or Krishna is in charge of the spiritual world. And one has one's relationship with him alone. But see, this is not really true, because if you are there as an individual in the spiritual world, the vision that you have depends on the approach that you made. In other words, the sadhana through which you cultivated your realization. If you worship Vishnu, you go to a world where Vishnu appears to be the deity. And the same goes with Shiva or Shakti or any other manifestation of God. We're not talking about the demigods here, like Indra and Chandra and Vayu and so on, because they are not in charge of the whole creation, only one specific aspect of it, like storms or wind or rain or the oceans or whatever. Well, we're talking about the Supreme God. The Supreme God is the form of God that one who realizes Brahman gets to interact with. And this is the form of God that you see when you go to the spiritual world and you have a relationship with. But you also have a relationship with his other devotees. So, in other words, it's multiple relationships, multiple activities with multiple actors in the spiritual world. That is, if you want to have a body. <laughs> now, because you have realized Brahman, at any time, you can just turn within, merge into Brahman, and forget all about any body that, or bodies that you may have. We'll see in the next Adhikarana, that bodies can be multiple. So, <laughs> what is the spiritual world? It's hard to describe. Why? Because it has immense variety. And how it looks to you depends on the conditioning that you approached it with. So, like I said, if you worship Vishnu, you'll think that Vishnu is God. If you worship Shiva, you think that Shiva is God in the spiritual world. They're both the same. They're both just proxies for Brahman. Same is true of Maya or any of the other goddesses. So when you go to the spiritual world, what you experience is a result of the approach or whom you worshiped on the way. Now, again, the Neo-Edwaitans don't want to worship anybody. Uh, they want to become the self. They want to be worshipped. <laughs> they want to become God by some philosophical trick. But it's not so. The jiva is always in a subordinate position. And we'll see in the final Adhikarana of this chapter that their powers are limited. Yes, they have tremendous powers compared to ordinary jivas in the material world. But they're not unlimited. They're not uh, identical with God's powers. For example, one cannot create or destroy or take over the running of the material creation. That is beyond the powers of even a realized jiva. So then, how should we look at this? How, what should be our attitude in our approach? It should be that the spiritual world is the world of love, where love is the currency. Love is the context and the subtext <laughs> of everything that happens. Because, why? There is no other agenda. There is no other activity going on. Yes, yes, there are pastimes like the goddess Shakti 
likes to pick battles with demons and defeat them with her lions. <laughs> this is her pastime. She enjoys it. So sometimes we see Shiva or Vishnu go out and battle demons and stuff like that. Why? Well, one thing is they want to cement their control and their identity on the universe. And they also want to demonstrate to their devotees their unparalleled prowess and power. But more than that, they want to attract their devotees' love. See, this is the important thing. This is the, really the main thing and really the only thing that matters in the spiritual world. This is why bhakti, unmotivated, pure love of God, not done in the pursuance of any reward, but just because of God's beauty and wonderful qualities. See, there's a, an old saying in the bhakti lineage that one develops love by hearing about the exalted qualities of the beloved. So this is certainly true of God because we can't see God directly. We can only see through the eyes of scripture and of yajna, sacrifice. So we have to perform sacrifice and the best sacrifice is the glorification of God through his holy name and recitations of his pastimes and qualities, shravana. And this is the first stage of self-realization. Then comes mananam and nidhyasanam. But we'll go over those separately. The main thing is that one should have love for God. By that love, he will be attracted and will bless you with liberation and final freedom. Om Tatsa, Om Shakti Om, Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs>